Hey guys, what's up? It is your good buddy Sam, and it is time for another Max MSP tutorial. Uh, I'm sorry, I know it's been ages since I sat down to do one of these, but, um, you know, a first of all, I got the whole messy divorce going on, and now it turns out my kid is addicted to Charlie Sheen, um, so it's just been a really tough time, and I haven't really had, you know, the energy to get my Max on. Um, but that's all over now, so, you know, let's take Max uh, to the Max, and let's make another tutorial. So, what perverse thing will we do to sound today? Well, today what we're going to do is take normal sounds and shift their pitches so that they sound even more awesome. Um, Notice I said pitch shifting and not frequency shifting, uh, because there is a difference. So I think in a previous video we touched on the freak shift object, and what the freak shift object does is it takes the constituent frequencies of a sound and it shifts them up, each by a fixed number of hertz. So that sounds a little something like this. And first let me just say, you are a protocol droid, are you not? But also, you'll notice that my voice sounds very different. Um, and while yes, it does sound like the energy of the sound has been moved up in frequency, also, it doesn't sound like the pitch has really been shifted, and also, I now don't sound like a human being anymore. So the reason that that happens is because we as human beings are very sensitive to the relationship between, not, not only to the frequencies of a sound, but even more especially especially to the relationship between those frequencies. Um, when I sing a note at A440, there is also a uh, component of that sound at 880 hertz, and another one at 1320 hertz, and another at 1760 hertz, and so on. These fixed integer multiples. And that harmonic relationship is what give that, gives that sound both its pitch and its timbre. Um, all the character, a lot of the character of the sound is contained in um, those harmonic relationships, and especially whether or not those relationships are in fact harmonic. Um, so the freak shift object destroys all that, and that's why it is no good for pitch shifting at all. Screw you, freak shift object. We don't need you. Instead, what we're going to do is use a variable delay line um, to get frequency shifted, sorry, pitch shifted sound. Um, so we're going to use a tap in and tap out object, and the principle here on which this frequency shifter will operate is akin to the Doppler effect. So if you've ever um, been in a high-speed car chase, then you would know that when the police finally do catch up to you and drive by, as they approach you, the pitch of the siren increases, and as they drive away from you, the pitch decreases. And the reason that happens is because the sound waves when the car is driving towards you are being crushed together, increasing their frequency, and as it drives away, they're being spread apart. That's exactly what we're going to do here with our tap-in, tap-out objects. We're going to use a phaser, uh, phaser to vary the delay between um, 0 and 1 and scale that by 100. And now when this phaser value is positive, we're taking sounds and increasing the amount that they're delayed over time. So that's going to pull the sound apart and decrease the frequency. When this phaser is negative, we're instead ramping down, we're decreasing the delay uh, of our sounds over time, and so we're smushing our sound waves together and increasing the pitch. So here's the pitch um, increased with a negative phaser. Here's, here's not, not only my, my voice, but also my high Susan, Susan Sarandon voice. voice. And here's my voice made lower. Here's my voice, that's not low enough. Here's my voice, much lower. So, oh, and here's a cool trick. Listen to this. Where have I heard that before? Hmm. Anyway, so, um, so now you can see what's happened is uh, my voice has been shifted down a great deal, uh, but it's definitely not the same as a freak shift object. Now you can actually hear a distinct pitch. Uh, which is awesome. Um, so first, let's talk about these two numbers here: the frequency of the phaser, uh, frequency of the phaser, and this, which is our delay window, which is is to say the longest that any one sound is going to be delayed in our delay line. Um, so there's a simple relationship between these and the frequency that comes out. So the frequency out, uh, f out, is equal to one. Uh, is equal to the frequency in geez, times 1 minus the phaser frequency times the delay window divided by 1000. 
because there are 1,000 uh, milliseconds to a second. So in this case, the phaser frequency is 4. The delay window is 100 divided by 1,000. So as 100, so we divide that by 1,000, and we have 4 times 0.1, which is 0.4. 1 minus 0.4 is 0 0.6. So the frequency out is 0 0.6 times the frequency in, which means we're shifting all our pitches down. So 100 hertz becomes 60 hertz, uh, 1000 hertz becomes 600 hertz, and so on and so on. Um, and of course, it's from negative. The opposite happens, and all our pitches get shifted up. Um, so we've done pretty well. How much time do we have? Oh, we've already burned up six minutes. Awesome. So uh, let's see, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so we noticed that we're able to shift the pitch down, but we've also introduced all of these really annoying clicks. So to deal with those clicks, what we want to do is, the, I mean those clicks obviously are coming from this phaser, because the phaser is going from 0 to 1 and then jumping right back down to 0, and that jump sounds like a click. So what we're going to do is window the sound. We're going to multiply the sound by 0 as it approaches those clicks, so that we'll be silencing our output but whenever we get to one, and that way we won't hear it. Um, so the way to do this, the, my favorite way to do it is with the... <laughs> okay, by my favorite I mean the established way to do it um, is with a cosine ramp. So what we're going to do is take the output of this phaser, subtract... This is just moving the output of the phaser... I got that right. Oh no, I missed a space. We're moving the output of the phaser, um, we're adjusting the output, scaling it so that... Um, it will be zero. The output of the cosine will be zero when the phaser is zero, and one when the uh, and zero when the phaser is one, and one in between. One more time. The output of the cosine is going to be zero when the phaser is zero, zero when the phaser is one, and one when the phaser is one half. So right in the middle. And if we get out a scope object so we can see what's going on, here's the output of my phaser. Here's the output of my cosine make this 2, and you can see whenever the phaser is 0, our ramp is uh, 0. Whenever it goes up to 1, our ramp is also at 1, and we actually have sound in the middle, so this is going to mask our discontinuities. Now if we multiply the output of this tap out object by the output of our window, we shouldn't hear any more clicks. Here's what that sounds like. Here's, Here's the, the same, same pitch shifted sound, sound, but without any clicks. Of course, now instead we have that phasing sound. We have uh, 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 as the, the ramp moves, moves up and down. down. So how are we going to deal with that? What can we possibly do? Well, supposing we did this. Um, supposing we took this phaser and we used not only one that was in phase like this, but also one that was 180 degrees out of phase with this one. So another phaser that was moved ahead halfway of this phaser, and then added those cosine ramps together. What might happen then? Well, let's try it. Um, let's delete these scopes for now. The way we're going to accomplish that is using the modulo object. And I'm telling you, you've got to learn how to use the modulo, because it is the shit. So uh, take the output of the phaser here. And let's, we're gonna make, what we're going to do is make this phaser a global phaser. And in this case, add 0 to that phaser, and then take that signal modulo tilde 1. The reason we're doing this is because now we can move... Uh, just by adjusting how much we add to the phaser here, we can get the same uh, a phaser that's in step with the with this phaser, but um, shifted by a certain number of degrees. Hope that made sense. It made sense to me, so it's good enough. So I'm going to take all this, duplicate it, move it over here, and the only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to add 0.5 to this, and now we have another phaser that's 180 degrees out of phase with the original one. Um, so if we make a couple more scopes. Over here is my original phaser, and over here is my out of phase phaser. And you'll see they're 180 degrees out of phase. And if I take the output of these two cosines and add them together, here's, here's one cosine. Um, oh, you know, I need to add them together and divide, and divide by two. So here's, oops. Here's one cosine, here's the other cosine, added together, see we've, we've evened out our sound now. Um, maybe I don't need to divide by two. Alright, screw it, I'm not dividing by two. Whatever, I'll do whatever I want. Now we've evened out the sound and we won't... Whatever. Anyway, we have them together and everything should be much better. Um, so here's the same sound, but now I've added those two ramps together with the one 180 degrees out of phase, 
and, and you'll, you'll hear, hear much less phasing. phasing. Uh, 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 it's definitely, definitely still there. Oh, because huh. I, I didn't add, add the input sound, sound to this, this one. one. Okay, okay, let's, let's try, try again. again. Uh, wow, like, like a, a million, million times better. better. So, so here's my voice, here's without that additional delay, 180 degrees out of phase. Out of phase. Uh, uh, and here's, here's with, with it. it. Uh, like, like a thousand, thousand times better. better. So, so, so we, we don't have much more time. Oh, we, we have no more time. time. But, but anyway, that's, that's how you do pitch shifting. shifting. Um, there's, there's so much more to talk about, man. man. Well, well, we, we could have talked about, about maybe, maybe like a part two. two. Um, um, anyway, anyway, that's, that's the, the basis of pitch shifting. Try it. Make your voice awesome and increasingly awesome as you approach. Actually shifting the pitch down to zero. Thank you so much for watching. It has made my heart melt like old cotton candy. I'll see you guys another time.